You're listening to Tori Writer's She Said What podcast. I'm Tori, along with Marcy Persky. If you're checking the weather forecast before you head out of town for work, don't check the one in Marcy Persky's neighborhood. Also, rental car bargains, or does that come with wheels? I'm flying into bad weather in California, which is a sentence you don't usually say. Usually you fly out of Chicago to California to get out of the bad weather and into the good weather. But all day long, I've been listening to the radio saying, you're going to need hip waders and you're going to need a boat and uh, (laughs) stay home. And and I got to go because I have to work. But the work that we were going to do is filming outside. Well, they did that to us last week, you know. A- and? Yeah. All week. It was like, oh, it's it's going to be a snowmageddon. No, oh, hide, hide. Go buy your shovels now. Get your rocks out. Coming from the Midwest, it's like snow is snow, you know, because they're also giving a countdown. Yes, the snow is going to start in 20 minutes. It's gonna start. And then all oh. of a sudden, it was like, never mind. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, we had a dusting, a literal dusting. But now, as you're flying in, uh, they predict we're going to get either two or 12 inches of snow. Just a a little range there. They're leaving themselves an opening. I think I could probably be a weather person for the mountains at this point. If my knee hurts on the left side, it's going to snow. If my knee hurts on the right side, it's going to be sunny. That sounds as good a plan as any. Back to Cali. Where you're going? They're calling it a river blast. Have you seen that yet? They have to keep thinking of names for things. <laughs> yeah. But the upcoming trip to LA has drawn a bright line under another feature of marriage. It's the difference between the way that the spousal unit rents cars and the way that I do it. First, he tells me he's found a pretty good deal on a rental car at the airport. And then all of a sudden, he finds on one of these aggregator sites like Expedia or Priceline or Kayak and he starts yeah. leaping up and down going look I found one for $50 and I and I stop him and I say well you know if all the other rental car companies are like around 200 bucks and this one is 50 something is very wrong here don't don't rent the car for 50 bucks just just don't but of course he can't help himself and so he agrees to rent this car for 50 bucks. And that's when the truth shows up in the in the how to pick up your rental car. And basically, that no wheels. It's well, there, the car, there no can wheels. be exactly two things that are wrong with it, right? Either yeah. the car is a piece of, well, there could be three. It could be A, yeah. the car is a piece of crap. B, the airport rental is actually 45 miles from the airport. Or C, all of the above. And so, or it's stolen, <laughs> maybe. Um, and so, immediately he starts gathering information, and then he's in the business of you just have to. Anytime the spousal unit begins a sentence with "you just have to," that's bad. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if Frankie does this, but the minute my spousal unit says, "Well, you just have to," That's, that's like, you just have to quit eating for a month or you just have to uh, be willing to camp out in 40 below zero weather or you just have to exist in a small box underneath a viaduct or in this case, you just have to (laughs) get on a bus and take it to the transit station and then take the transit and others. And at at that point, I'm like, forget it, forget it. I'm not. Well, you know, we, we've given up on rental cars. And we do this um, where you rent somebody's personal vehicle. And it's worked out really well for us every single time. And I'll tell you the name of it. And then they owe us money. But look up (laughs) T-U-R-O. It's almost Turo. It's like my name. No, I've got a perfectly good. And that's where we got that big van that we drove for the week of Ben's wedding. And it was $200 for the whole week. And it was a really nice big old fancy van. I would be willing to try it, except that I'm not driving this car in rural Michigan. I'm driving this thing in LA. And the last time... Yeah, but I 
The, I bet they have them in L.A. Oh, I'm sure they do. But the last time I rented a car in an urban area, within 24 hours, someone had broken in the window and chiseled the ignition out of the steering column. And I don't want to have to deal with that. That's lovely. I'm so glad I live where I live. Personal car. I, wa- I want to be with that. That's all right. We've got 500 more where that came from. That's what I want. And I, so All I have to worry about is fake weather reports. I don't have to worry about anybody digging the ignition out of my car. Well, there's See, I'm trying to explain to you why your life is so much better than mine, even though I don't really believe it. Finally, he came downstairs somewhat shamefaced, and he said, well, I I read the reviews. (laughs) (laughs) So that was the end of that conversation. And now I I have to... I always read reviews before I do anything. Well, I think the thing about those bargain sites is you don't know. You don't yeah. get to read the review until they've already offered you the thing. Oh, so, oh, oh, you mean like when Priceline yes. and you're signing up blind? Yes, that's oh, a see, yes. I, I would never do that. Well, there I you would go. Never do that. Again, I that's would like, like to I, I point would end out. Up, I, I would end up at like Hooker and Smelly Feet Hotel. I just know it. So, well, yeah, I don't, I want to know where I'm going to be. And And that basically is the difference between us and the spousal unit. Yeah, <laughs> we've nailed it there. I think, but he has a lot of good points. Come on, many good points. Just uh, it's weird when you have people in your life who don't. They believe you most of the time, except when maybe it would save them a few bucks not to believe you if they were right and you were wrong. <laughs> so. I do all of that kind of research stuff. So whenever we have somewhere to go, Frankie just says. Here, this is where we're going. This is where we have to be. Uh, find us a cheap hotel. Find us a cheap car, whatever we need. Because I'm like, I'm very tenacious when it comes to that kind of stuff. And my kids do the same thing. They'll call me and say, you know, hey, we want to come and visit you, blah, blah, blah. Where can we get a cheap rental car? And now it's going to be where can we stay? Because you can't the family stay has grown with exponentially. The baby. Right. Okay, well, um, so... At, don't tell yes. the spousal unit, but I used to be really good at that stuff. And if aliens abduct him and take him to Mars, I'll do it just <laughs> fine. But we like him to feel useful. <laughs> we want him to feel like, you know, he's got an important role to play here. So if he wants, the other thing is he cares about stuff that I don't care about. So when we were booking, for example, our vacation, this thing to LA is work, not a vacation. We were booking a vacation. Yeah. And I said, well, here's the neighborhood that we want to be in. Uh, Here are five places. Choose the one you like. And, of course, he comes up with five that are cheaper. And I'm stuck pointing out, okay, this is basically a straw mattress on the floor with a burrow next to it. That's why you're – don't – I gave you the five. You choose from the five. I don't want to stay in the barrio. Right. With the crypts and the bloods. I don't want to (laughs) stay – in in any place where there's any more shooting than the place we live now. Yeah. Well, that doesn't cut out much. No, actually <laughs> doesn't. I did a lot of work last week for a radio station. And uh, what's interesting is that whenever somebody leaves a radio station, there's there's the official reason. And then there's the reason that maybe people who work there know. Typically... The person involved says nothing. That's how it usually goes, right? There's tier one, tier two, tier three. But weirdly, in this case, that's not quite what happened. And I don't know if it's just the times or the social media, but maybe because you can do your own program from your closet if you want to. Like now. (laughs) There's like, yeah, like we're doing right. Just like this. So there, it's it, now the fashion, it, and it's not just, I checked, it's not just this particular change. The fashion is now that you do your own show explaining your view of everything that happened, or, and this is the one that drives me bananas, well, I'm not saying this is what happened, but other people are saying this is what happened. Ugh. And I can't That's stop. Like my uncle told my cousin, told my aunt, four times removed. It, it's like. That's the communication chain now. I, 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 we are not political, but I can tell you that there is a far right side of one political party. That's how they communicate. 
That's what they believe. What's well, the same the on the earth earth far flat. left <laughs> side of another political party? It's no well, different. Yeah. It's the earth is flat because somebody's cousin, brother, sister in law's uncle fell off the earth one day. They heard. They approved. They heard. Yeah, they heard. Right. But that's not even what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, let's just say that you personally believe the earth is flat, right? But yeah. you can't publicly say because you feel like that would not be becoming to, to get on social media and say, I've discovered that the earth is flat and I said so. And they fired me for telling you that the earth is flat. That would be a thing that I used that. to maybe happen. But now what you get is, well, I never said the earth is flat, but I can't help it if they're all saying it. Don't blame me. That's what they're all saying. So it's the opposite sort of of what you're saying where you say, I believe this now because other people say it. It's where you pretend. You pretend that you really just don't have a clue, but you can't stop other people from saying it. And all I know is... If you fire me off this podcast, Marcy Persky, yeah. you won't have me making a podcast going, yeah. I'm not going to say what really happened. Blame like, it on one of my kids. Some people called me up and told me. And that's the way it's done now. You don't give your own opinion about why something bad happened. You just say that you heard it from somebody else. And so today's get off my lawn complaint is learn how to get fired. Learn it. When you're finished, just quietly get up and with your head held high and with a little shred of dignity, thank the people who gave you the job, even if they're really scum. And you quietly close the door and you say, well, that's the end of that chapter. You pack your little box of stuff. You take your jacks. your little troll dolls. Your ball and jacks and go home. That's right. All your desk toys. You take, right, when I get fired, which has happened to me more times than I could probably easily count, First of all, I'm smart about it now. I never put anything on my desk that doesn't immediately get swept into a garbage can the minute I'm fired. Like, that's yeah. the first rule. If it entertains me while I'm here, great. And if I leave here, I just put it right in the trash and then I go away. Or if I can't, I can't fit it in my purse, like in two minutes, I, I barely even take my car keys when I'm fired. That That's about all I take. Like, let me have my car keys and the recording of my last show in case you try to take me to court for something you say that I said. So see, I've never been I've never been fired from a job. I can say that. Oh, it's always been either someone came along and offered me more money to do the job that I was doing somewhere else Mm. or my station was sold Mm. and they're getting rid of all of us. Everybody. Yeah. We're replacing you all with automation. Mm. I could give classes I've been fired so many times how to be fired. That's a thing I know how to do. I've been fired from jobs that I wasn't even hired for. That's how good at being fired I am. Yeah, I was fired in San Francisco. I was filling in. It was a talk station and had been sold and they were going to make it a classical station. And while everybody was out being interviewed, all the bosses were out looking for other jobs. I did a show that made a little trouble. And uh, the person who was desperate to run the new classical station after it was bought immediately moved into the corner office because the guy who had had the corner office was on a plane looking for work somewhere else. So she moves into the corner office. I do this show at the behest of the guy in the other corner office. It gets a lot of blowback. He's on a plane to something or other. And she calls me into the corner office that isn't even really hers. And she tells me that they're firing me. And I don't even, I don't even, I don't even have the interest have a job in explaining to her that I don't work for you. I'm just filling in while everybody jumps on their various life rafts and paddles the hell out of here as fast as they can. And then the thing that smoked my buns, she called all the papers and told them she had fired me. And then I got even. <laughs> Then I got it. That's when I got even. Well, there's nothing talk show hosts love more than hearing that a fellow talk show host has been fired for doing the very thing that supposedly we get paid to do. Ah. So within 48 hours, I was a guest on talk shows in Boston and New York and Los Angeles. And within 48 hours, I had a job offer from Los Angeles saying, well, hey, since you're fired from the job that you actually didn't have, why don't we give you a job? Yeah. So... 
Thanks for listening to the Tory Writers She Said What podcast. Since you've made it to the end, you might want to know that my book, She Said What? A Life on the Air, is not only available in print, but now also in complete audiobook form, narrated by me and available on Audible. 